So, okay. We've covered the top parts of the farm. We've now covered the engines and sorting part. Now over to here, this is where we're producing the biomass. And for this, I'd like to kind of work backwards. So we have our biomass over here, which is filling up this nice, very big tank for us. Um, it simply pulls out some, or rather, it simply puts in the biomass down here, which is being fed out of that fermenter over there. The piping over here has to kind of take a couple detours so that it uh, doesn't get in the way, but it's not that big. It just goes underneath this chest, which we'll explain in a moment. And the chest comes, uh, or the chest, once it's under it, it goes over here to the fermenter, which is sitting here waiting for saplings to turn into nice rich biomass. As you can see it does it very fast. Um, so what's going on over here? Uh, well first off the fermenter right here is taking in a lot of inputs. Firstly let's go over the water which you've probably clearly seen. These are liquiducts. I don't know they just look better than um, golden pipes. I could use uh, the Buildcraft um, pipes and you can certainly use them yourself. I just thought these looked a lot cooler which is why I started using them as well as they can be e instantly dismantled with a wrench with a um, shift right click. Um, I don't want to do it because I don't want to rebuild it but it's very nifty and they basically serve the exact same function as uh, the wooden pipe and the um, golden water pipe all in one pipe. So, it's just a convenience thing. They're called liquiducts. They can be crafted with copper and hardened glass, which is annoying to make. Um, as you can see, pulverized obsidian and lead. So, it's very annoying to make them compared to the uh, pipes, but they are very useful and they look better. So, yeah, but think of these just as normal liquid pipes. We have an aqueous accumulator over here, which you've seen before just using two water sources basically gives it infinite water and that's feeding this fermenter now you might also notice the pipe goes up and over to that liquid transposer that we had over here so basically this little water pipe feeds both our fermenter all the water it needs as well as the liquid transposer up there all the water it needs so okay now that we have that, what else are we taking as inputs? Well, you might notice there's this golden pipe on the side. Um, this is where the uh, saplings are coming from. And if you look up here, you have our first diamond pipe in the system down here. Um, there's actually only two of them. There's one over there and one over here. I've really simplified the logic of this. Um, I used to have eight of these diamond pipes throughout the system to handle the logic. So as you can see on the black line, which is down, we have the sapling. On the red line, which is that direction, we have a redstone torch, which is my way of saying don't go there. And on the yellow line, we have hummus. Um, again, hummus is going out to those tree farms, which are over there. So you might be noticing that the gray line is completely clear. This is because we want all resources that are going this into this pipe to either go to where they're supposed to, i.e. branches go down here, hummus goes out to the tree farm, or we wanting them to go up to the top where they're being stored. Um, the only thing actually going up there, however, is wood, apples, and sand. So it would be very easy to uh, just put them here, but I just wanted to make it very clean. Um, this is also makes it a little more flexible for people. So, okay, you're like, well, you, how about we explain what's going on with this pipe? Why do we even need it? Well, the tree farm sends out items, and we also need to send back hummus. Um, so this pipe here is basically to take hummus, as you're seeing, from over here, with those wooden chests we talked about earlier. Um, so what's happening is that this is basically kind of our junction for all of our different setups. This handles getting our... Um, fermenter are saplings, it handles sending hummus back to the system, and it handles taking in sand, tree branches, apples, um, and everything else into the system and processing it. So this is kind of the most complex part of the system. Um, and as you can see, it's very easy. Now, over here, what we have going is these chests. And you might notice that there's another one of these weird solar panels here and another sorter. 
And uh, I actually need to break the block above this again. Whoopsie. Um, these things last forever on power, so they usually don't need much. But uh, you do want this open, actually. Um, so anyways, what we have here is another sorter, and again, as you see, colored pipes. Um, this is because I want to send hummus equally to both sides. So what I'm doing is I'm using the sorter, it's sending hummus to both sides, voila, in these chests, which then put it into regular build path pipes so that I can run it back through the same system that I get all my resources. Over here you'll see another diamond pipe that's even simpler. The only logic is don't go down red and go send hummus down green. Everything else goes up top, which is handled, and in that, of course that's just again sand, wood, and apples. Nothing else is going to come out of that. So sand, wood, and apples, very, very simple, and saplings, of course. Sorry, saplings are also handled by that because the saplings are sent up top and then they just run back over to this far side. Um, and if we look up here, whoa. I was not expecting to fall down that. If we look up here, the pipe runs just both ways right across here. Um, and all that the logic of these diamond pipes are is tell the item to go down that hole. That's it. So the saplings, which aren't told to go anywhere, go all the way across and back down into this pipe where they're told to go down into the fermenter. So that's what's happening up in this little section. So, okay. Now we've gotten everything hopefully understood. I'm just going to quickly go over it. We have the fermenter, which puts, or we have the bio tank, which holds all our biomass, which takes it from the fermenter, which is getting water, which is getting, um, what's it called? Uh, ah, getting saplings. I keep calling them branches, I think. Getting saplings, and that's basically everything that's, that's happening. Now, you might notice that there's this one block I've been ignoring. This is a redstone energy cell. And these are kind of complex to make. I'm going to show you real quick. They take these energy cells with these electromagnets, lead ingots, redstone circuits. These take an empty frame with molten redstone, all this stuff. Um, you don't actually need this here. Uh, you can just run your power directly to it. However, if you do do that, you can run into the problem of which that uh, basically Buildcraft's power system sucks. Um, it doesn't work very well. It tends to be wasteful and not route power correctly. However, this guy acts like an MFSU, um, and it will pull all the power it can in and then put it out whenever it's needed to put out the power. And because of this, you have basically a very, very large power reserve which your fermenter can use to instantly process saplings. Whereas without this, it has to draw power from the system whenever it, it's running, which means that all the rest of the time, all that power is wasted. And so you end up having problems with keeping up with sapling production because all, so much power is being wasted during the times you're not processing them. Now you don't need this here. The system having 20 peat engines is able to keep up with saplings if you block off the power from this little junction right here. What you do is you break this um, and instead of routing, routing the power how we have it, which I will explain, you would simply route the power from all of this. Um, you take these two lines Sorry, this is a little complex, but you take the line from this engine and the line from these back engines and you simply run them over each other and you keep them separate from this main line from these 10 engines and then you have basically 10 engines powering just that line um, and then you'd run this power block. Let's get some blocks like this. You'd run it like this. Uh, like this and this and then you'd run say this underneath now you might be wondering are you sure you have to do this yes I'm sure I spent a good hour letting it run to see if we would indeed need this um, but yes if you don't want to use this redstone um, energy cell over here you will have to do this really arbitrary stupid thing to basically make it so that you have enough power on that line to be able to handle it. However, if you don't, 
you can simply junction all these together and not worry. Um, you can also just leave it like this and it will run just fine even with that redstone energy cell. However, you don't need to have it and it makes it look so much more pretty if you don't do this. This just looks blah and ugly. Um, now you might notice I also have this line running up, which is a little weird. That's just because we needed to power that liquid transposer. So this is where most of the power in the system is being routed around. Um, this little four-way junction here basically powers up the farms on the far sides. So it powers that farm over there. It also powers our liquid transposer over here. And then it also powers our fermenter over here. So basically we're just running all the power lines right into this single junction here. And it routes power through this way to that guy, which is the farm over there, this farm, fermenter, and transposer. So okay, that's all the power routing going around. What's left to cover? Well, there's really only one process left to cover now, and that is the production of hummus. Now, the hummus is an interesting beast because we need fertilizer, and fertilizer is a pain to get. Um, however, I told you that we're using ash for it. Now, if you remember, these pipes right here, these stone pipes, are handling the ash. Now, what's happening is the ash is being sent up here, and it's sent into this chest. Now, that chest is next to this auto crafting table, and as you can see, the auto crafting table takes sand and ash and makes fertilizer. And if you remember, we had sand going into this chest, this little barrel right here. And awesomely enough, auto crafting tables can pull from barrels. So basically, all we have to do is route our, sand, our, our ash into this chest, and it will automatically keep making um, uh, fertilizer whenever you want. And you also get extra sand as a boot. I know we're creating infinite sand over there, but hey, you know. Here's some sand that you can grab easily enough from a chest. So okay, we're making fertilizer there. And if you might notice, we had a redstone engine here, which is pumping out the bottom of that crafting table and simply sending it down to this chest where we have plenty of fertilizer. Now here we have another little uh, trick, which is we have a transposer right here. This transposer, and let me show you the item is very simple to build, very cheap, and what it does is whenever it receives a redstone pulse, it tries to pull an item out of wherever it's pointed and put it into wherever its other end is pointed with that tiny little hole. And uh, I have a timer here, the same that I used up there, and all it does is it goes around and gives it a pulse ever so often. And this pulse will say, hey, try to pull the item out and put it into that thing. However, because redstone pipes know that they don't need to put an item in there if it's full on the other side, well, can you guess what the other side is? The other side, whoa, is, voila, la, over here to the fermenter. And I really don't know if you can even see that through the block. But basically, it runs into the fermenter right over here into the bottom of it and fills up the bottom with fertilizer. I did ignore that pipe because I wanted to wait until we covered it. So there's a little pipe under there that is pumping in fertilizer from the bottom as well. So that's the final pipe going into the fermenter, which now literally has every single facing having a block in the path because of this little redstone engine right here. <laughs> so yeah, the fermenter is a very busy person. So yeah, this little transposer is pulling out items whenever it can to put into the bottom of that so that it always has fertilizer. The rest of the fertilizer, however, is left waiting here to be crafted into hummus. Now, over here we have dirt. Um, this is coming from that sorter on the far side that I was telling you about, that sorted dirt. Um, and it just sorts it at a two to one ratio, and it sends dirt. And as you can see, I've put green here, and I've put yellow here. And basically this says that Green goes over to this chest, and yellow goes up to that chest right there. Or not right there, sorry. Right there. And that is that chest that we showed off earlier. Doo -doo -doo. For the three, oh gosh. For the three 
chests that are around our bog um, earth uh, auto crafting. So, okay. <sighs> Sorry, it's a lot to explain. Ah, keep falling in holes. Uh, so that's a lot to explain. In this last little section, all that we're doing is we're basically pulling in all of the stuff that we've been producing from every section. We pull in ash, we pull in dirt, and we make hummus. That hummus is then put into the chest behind the sorter, which then sorts it out back to the other machines. And here you can see a perfect example of the dirt coming in, going into the chest. So, okay. Hopefully that was enough of an explanation for everyone. This actually isn't that complicated once you now get down to it. All it is is simply building the pipes to the correct parts of the machine and it all follows after that. I've basically tried to construct this as simply as possible um, in terms of basically you just kind of have to build the items and everything will kind of flow naturally. Um, the only diamond pipes and logic that we need is just up there and there and it's very very simple otherwise it's a lot of piping a lot of machines a lot of blocks and a lot of materials invested but just in the time that it's taken me to perfect this which has been quite a while I will admit we've made 670 buckets worth of biomass which is an amazing amount of power and we keep producing more so yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial um, I realize it's very complex. If you're looking to build this yourself, just watch the video a couple times through for the parts that you're trying to you know, build up. But it does flow very logically once you get it all going. Every item goes to where it should go. And the reason why I have built this like this, which I guess I haven't explained yet, is I've designed this to be built underground. Um, and basically this would all be hidden underground out of sight out of mind um, this does mean you're gonna have to dig up a lot of dirt to put this whole system in um, this is quite a lot of machine blocks to place uh, I would recommend just grabbing a filler and using clear to uh, completely remove out a large chunk of space but as you can see and hopefully this makes a little more sense now that I've explained it all to you this is actually very simple all it is is putting items into pipes that automatically do whatever they're supposed to do. And uh, yeah, you don't have to do anything with the system. It's perfectly balanced and you get a lot of resources out of it. So yeah, hopefully you all enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments or on the Reddit thread that I'm going to be posting this on. Um, I'll take every effort I can to make this um, as easy and painless for you guys as possible if you have some questions. Maybe I might have missed something in the video. So yeah, thanks for watching everyone and have a great day.